am the Dusty Dynamo, the T.O. who's known to tiptoe around your hoes. Quick hitters as always. Hmm. Whoa. Whoa. Husky boy season. Sorry, mom. I know that I'm party bus calls. Facts. Bitches the young in the wash. It's going down in the garage. Bitches the young in the wash. It's going up like Randy Moss. Josh and David the boss. Duns will be bringing the sauce. Travis survive, but don't be surprised if he go take the day off. Cause bitches the young in the wash. It's going down in the garage. And we're back with another episode of The Young and the Wash. I am the Dusty Dynamo, a.k.a. Half Bezos, a.k.a. the Teal, who's known to tiptoe around you like I got turf toe. And with me, as always, the light skin from the barn, London dripped in himself, you know what I mean? And we do have a guest, and I'm going to let the Tennessee kid introduce him. Yeah, we got a good guest today, Josh Palais here, and our guest is Dylan Baxter, one of the greatest San Diego athletes of all time, arguably the greatest San Diego athlete of all time. He's doing us a favor by sitting in and talking with us. We're going to start the show quick hitters like always. And we're going to kick it off to you first, Dylan. First question. If you could switch places with one person, who would it be? Ooh. Ooh. All right. Obama. Obama? <laughs> After Obama. the presidency? After presidency. Okay, yeah. why Obama? I mean, he's legendary. He's okay. Legendary. I like he is. You know I like saying? it. Yeah. Black man with the health net, I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good I'm, man I'm right glad here. He said afterwards because man, the grades before and the grades after. If you look at it, my man was stressed out eight years Stress. straight. Eight, eight summer straight. <laughs> There's a lot of gray hair. There's a lot of gray hair at him, bro. This is a, a kind of a wash answer, but LeBron on the back nine. I'm taking LeBron in, in the back nine right now. I, I, I feel like he's living a good life. Like all the shit he has going on. I feel him and his hairline though. Yeah, bro. I'm so you need that. It. You need that. The part he, of the game is to grow old though. Like the hairline comes with mm-hmm. winning the game like you know when yeah you, yeah when you get old like if the point is to get old it comes with product <laughs> <laughs> the, um I, I don't like the lebron one only because they're still criticizing him like it's year one like they still yeah. are like on yeah, his that's, bumper that's, that's it comes just, with being a laker though i think too like, it comes with being it. a legend honestly yeah i'm gonna go with like ronald acuna nah <laughs> i'm gonna go with whoever is like the second best golfer in the world right now. Whoever that is, that's what I want. I get the bag Scheffler, every week. It's not Rory anymore. But it's the beauty of you life. Can be Sh- you could be Xander Shoffley. I'm making money. I'm not expected to be a prime-looking athlete. I'm doing my thing, and I get to travel every weekend regardless. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm going to go with whoever's the second best golfer in the world right now. You got to answer, Trav? I'm going to go Dana White again. Dana White? I'm going to go Dana I'm not White. I'm going to go Dana White again. <laughs> All right. What is your most used emoji? Uh, man, I have to say that little face with the drool on it. Yeah? yeah. You got to be careful with that one, yeah, bro. You got to use, gotta use that one too much. It's unexpected, though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's unexpected. You know? It's, it's, not, it's not basic, I'll tell you that. It's, it's, not, it's basic. not basic. That's a fact. I'd be afraid to use that just because, like, that can be interpreted it could, any way. 100%. Bro, like, yeah. I just met you, but I'd be so disappointed if it was the laughing, crying face. I'm going to be honest. If that was oh, your yeah. thing, I'd be like, you're better than that. You know what yeah, I mean? way better than that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Josh, I feel like you have a good one. Are you? Is it real Not, basic? I, big, uh, it's okay, guy. <laughs> Everything's okay. You're an okay guy? I'm an okay guy. I hate that. I hate that. Hey, but, <laughs> hey, but it's still better than the thumbs up. People yeah, I hate can't the say, I hate up. this, and I, I hate it all. I hate all I the... just started using the thumbs up, and I know I hadn't used You're it. You're a thumbs up type of guy, no, though. I expect I that from you. I just started doing it, and I realized it because my thumb was so white. Like, I was trying to find it. I hadn't even used the brown one yet, and I was Damn. like, I never use this emoji. Honestly, for a light skin, you can never find the right color. It's either... I round up. See, that's why I round up. I round up. You know, you know what's funny? We have a homie. Shout out to Drama Beats. Him and Travis about two years ago and got in this huge argument about what color his bit emoji was. And we went and Googled a whole brown palette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly. Just to show him, like. No, no racial. We came to the conclusion that our boy is tortilla brown. That is exactly how they described it on the on the palette. Did you see what they put me? Uh, you see my color on NCAA? Oh mm. my god, I do it. brother. Yeah, <laughs> really. I was, I'll no, take bro, he beat at 99 and I'm not uh, no 99 cat. Bro, he looked like he looked like he was tonguing. Like this man was dark. That's hilarious. Dark. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dylan, back to you. Is your favorite food as a kid still your favorite food today? Oh yeah, every day of the week. Uh, I'm a southern boy, so I like that uh smothered uh smothered pork chops. Yeah. Wow, smothered, smothered pork, pork chops. I wasn't expecting that. Can't okay. go wrong with that. All right, what about you, Trav? Still the same thing? Pretty much. I love hamburgers till I die. Like, you know, I just... What's so your like, spot? What's your number one spot? Well, it's, of course, going to be in and out but, like... Okay, yeah. respect. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, I just go fast food. I'm lazy like that. Like, I'm not a big, like, Slater's 50-50s or, like, going, like, these special restaurants. Like, I just... 
It's too, there's too much going on when you go. Honestly, there. yeah. I'm just like, like, I'd rather get something else if I'm going to go to those type of places. Absolutely, 100%. What about you? Yeah. Um, maybe not, my favorite struggle meals are still my favorite struggle meals. Like, no matter what they are. Like, I'm still a big, like, sweet rice, this milk, cooked rice. A hot dogs and beans type of guy? A uh, hot links guy. I've, I've upgraded the palate just a little bit. But okay. just definitely more. I definitely had a hot link yesterday. I'm not even going to sit here in front. But, yeah, definitely, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> definitely had a hot link. My, dad, my dad's from South Carolina. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, it's going to happen. There always will be hot links in the fridge. Southern food's better. I live in Nashville. Tennessee and the food there just doesn't even compare to the food here. I think yeah, people I will hate on me for that opinion, but Southern food is better. I would more say more healthy, but it tastes yeah. a lot better. It just makes yeah. you feel better. Like your soul feels better after you eat it. Like right? sure. I don't, I don't feel anything internally after the salad. Like it's just nah, the salad. Yeah. Just I need a waffle weird. house out here. Need yeah, that. there's nothing satisfying about avocado toast. You know? <laughs> Travel with the waffle house one time, but he's not. I need coming. it. He's not coming back. I respect. Yeah, because I was always a big uh, Roscoe's guy, like the big chicken and waffles and stuff like that. I always loved that. Or like a uh, Brian's Twenty Four didn't do too bad with that. Um, but I love breakfast food. I must say, I, I love breakfast food. So yeah. All right, Trav. If you could go back to one decade, would you choose the '90s or the 2000s? The 2000s. Why? Because you remember it better. That and probably the music. The music, the music of the '90s is it was, really good. It was though. good. It was good, but I'm more of a, I'm like a big R&B guy. So like, uh, R&B in the '90s but I, is really but good. But I feel like, I feel, like, and maybe I'm wrong I'm with the timeline. But you really, gotta, we gotta know me with music though. Like, like I don't know. For me, I feel like if you go to 2000 to 2010 and you just put like R&B, mm-hmm. like for some reason, I'm gonna know all those songs. Like that's just yeah, how I of am. Course, yeah. But that's because I was old, I was older. Yeah. I could so, but like the '90s stuff, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't know. I think I know your answer. You're gonna say the '90s. For sure, the '90s. <laughs> I mean, you could put any song, guy or J Lo. Oh, yeah, of course. Shanti. Yeah. You know, Nelly, all them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Undefeated, right? All right, what about um, you? I'm going 2000s. I'm going to be honest with you. The 90s were dangerous as hell. We're going to keep acting like this wasn't a thing. They were outside wilding. And I, I'm with Trav. I think the music was just, it's better in the 2000s, in my opinion. Like, who was cracking in the 90s was also partially cracking in the 2000s. So I can, you get kind That's- of the best of like, both worlds. Okay, I'm not going to be around for Tupac and Biggie, but I would much rather be in the club when where this where the party at by Jagged Edge comes on than a lot of other timelines. In life. I mean, but 2000s like they all like they're kind of all starting to sound the same. All right, so when we say 2000, Facts. we're talking 2000 to 2010. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. Nah, yeah, I'm, we're good. From 2000 to 2006, you're going to have some good ones out there, but I can see what you mean. Yeah, no. In the in the yeah. after spec, but I, I, like, I think- imagine being in the club during the T Pain run. <laughs> I think that's that's like time to be outside. Acorn. Yeah. They, I don't know about that. If I want to be, I was a big Akon guy. I, like I don't know Akon. if I want to be. I, like I was young. Akon, yeah, I'm an Akon, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Akon guy, but I don't know if I want to be in the club when there's a, like. I don't want to hear so lonely in the club. Like that's a wild moment. <laughs> I don't think like, <laughs> like bottle <laughs> service comes out. You just see me crying like No Sean Moreno during the national out. anthem. Like yeah. that's wild. With Tyrese, would that be Jamie Fox? Tyrese, uh, uh, Jamie Fox didn't put out too much music in 2000. Tyrese is like a 90s. I would give him more yeah, than more 90s. 90s yeah. More 90s, more 90s. Because 2000, he's doing Fast and Furious. He's not putting out as much music. Yeah, but the 90s had like the groups. When I think of 2000s. I think yeah. of like individuals. 90s was like the groups of people, and I, I like okay. that better. Yeah, I, I, can, I, see, I can see that. Big, I can see that. Big Backstreet Boys guy, by the way. I'm sorry to admit <laughs> it, bro. I was just so happy. <laughs> you know, like Thank you, bro. Like exactly. Life like was good. The Blicky or some, yeah, something yeah. crazy. Like, you know, like it's just crazy. I'm also going to go 2000s because I feel like it was easier, a tad bit easier to interact with people. You could text, you had aim on your phone. The 90s, I'm not going to a payphone to call your beeper for you to holler at me back. Like, that's not what's going down. I'm trying to expedite these processes a little bit. All right, man. Obviously, you know, football player. When did you start playing football, and when did you know you were kind of different than everybody else? Man, um, so I started playing football in Florida, in Jacksonville, uh, when I was eight for the for the Panthers. And I will be honest, we didn't win a game. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I started out at a D tackle. No That's way. Terrible, right? <laughs> How long do you live in Florida? Because I never knew that till right now. Uh, so I lived there until I was. Nine. And Nine, I moved okay. from there to Tampa Bay, Florida, and then from there to here. Okay. Why did you move to San Diego? Uh, so my white side of the family lives out here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not to sound bad or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I came out here with my mom. And your mom's blonde, white lady. Yeah. I, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so and then my dad's family is all out there in Florida. Okay, got gotcha. So, yeah, I came with her when my parents split up. Okay. Yeah. When then, you um, yeah no go for it go when for you it. got here did you see like an immediate shift in like the football culture because I know like how serious they take like youth football down in Florida when you come out here <laughs> and you play youth football was it like a whole different like cause I feel like that could be the biggest culture shock of it all you know what I mean I mean not really because when I was in like Pop Warner down here is not like it was when I was playing down here so I played for Kearney. Mm-hmm. Kearney I, Con- I, yeah. Yeah. comments you know what I'm saying then it went to Kearney Bulldogs now there yeah. is no Kearney. 
You know what I'm saying? And like it was Kearney, VP, Balboa. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, it was popping out here. So I mean, like, not really. That's true, yeah, because de- you're definitely damn, cause both, almost every league you just said isn't around anymore. Yeah, VP went out yeah, VP, a while back. Yeah, VP became actual Pop Warner. It's not mm-hmm. that San Diego youth. Kearney's gone. Yeah, that's wild. So you, you said you weren't very good in Florida, right, the whole time you were there? Or did you get kind of good? Terrible. <laughs> like, my, what, Straight up. I'm just thinking in my head, like, you blew up, obviously. The people in Florida got to be like, Dylan was ass when he was out here. Like, what Man, happened? So, like, uh, and then when I was out here, my first – Two years, I started out. I started out at tight end. What? So I went from tight end, but like I remember, I was late to weigh-ins too. And then so like like out here, like you got, you know, every division like junior pee wee pee wee. Like you guys stay with each other, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, they like already had a team. Okay. You know, they had all their running backs and all you know the quarterbacks. But then I remember we were just like the first day we were doing a little like catch and throw. You mm-hmm. know, wide receivers doing a, like a like a fade or whatever in the quarterback throwing. And then I was like, I can throw, you know? And then like, he put me over there and launched it, you know? And then, but yeah, you're at tight end though. So then I just, you know, I played my part. Yeah. They would throw me at quarterback. And Big then, team guy. Got to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I did my, I paid my dues. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That. Got it. So then you end up at Mission Bay. Did you want to go to Mission Bay or how did that work out? Um, man. Yeah, I did, because yeah. I was actually, so I played baseball all growing up, too. Okay. I was a big baseball guy. Like, I played travel ball, San Diego Stars. Uh, me and Bryce Harper, we went to Cooperstown. You guys were on the same team? Same team, San Diego wow. Stars. Yeah. You got a picture of you two on the same team? Uh, Yeah. Oh, you got to you got to send me that after <laughs> this. I put it on the on the episode for sure. And believe it or not, I was better at baseball. Than really? Football, yeah, I was a pitcher. I was throwing gas and all that, but like... Uh, Man, I let that go as soon as I got to high. So the reason I went to Mission Bay is because they obviously had a good football team and baseball. Like, you know, they had Matt Bush and then all mm-hmm. those guys coming out. So that was the reason I went there. And, I mean, like I said earlier, like I tried to go to Sarah. I yeah. wanted to. I went to Dave Pertola Middle School and all my friends. First guy I've ever heard say he wanted to go to Sarah, by the never way. Never in my yeah, life. Yeah, never bro. heard that in my life, bro. I mean, but my attitude was I don't care where I go. I'm about, I'm about you're to ball out. You're going to get off. I'm about to ball out. Yeah. And wherever I'm at is going to be that. That's going to be the school, mm-hmm. you know? But, you know, things didn't work out that way with the coaches and, you know, found we- out I could. Pl- oh, and I started getting tutored by the varsity Mission Bay coach when I was at eighth grade for math. I don't think he really wanted to tutor me. It was kind of a way to get me to go there, but it worked. So <laughs> I ended up going there. What gave you the confidence, like, in middle school? Because we don't have to talk about how you – what conversation led to you going to Mission Bay. But when you made that decision, you're like, well, I'm just going to ball out anywhere. Like, did you always have that confidence, or was it, like, throughout yeah. the years? Because, like you said, you did have to pay your dues. A lot of guys who are paying their dues aren't going to be like, it don't matter what school I'm going to. Like, they're more thinking it's a system type of situation, mm-hmm. you know? So – so yeah, I say I paid my dues, but like it was it was young. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, throughout Pop Warner, I gradually got to quarterback and then running back and then so quarterback and running back, you know. And then by then, like I remember in eighth grade, like after school, like you know playing sandlot ball with the high school boys and you know killing them. So like I mean, I kind of knew that I believed I could play varsity, but I didn't know like what I was you know, got to turn out to be my freshman year and do the things that I did, you know, it just kind of, you know, game by game just kept happening. So did you play a lot as a freshman, a sophomore? How did that work out? Yeah, I started all the way through. Okay. I'm, I'm two years younger than you. We all are actually. And okay. I didn't know he wore really till your senior year. Okay. Because that's when things got kind of out of control, I'd say. Yeah. You had, and correct me if I'm wrong, dude, you had 79 touchdowns on offense, a couple on defense for like 81 total touchdowns, unanimous All-American, Army Player of the Year, Mr. Football you know, for the entire United States, Max Preps Player of the Year for the state of California, Parade All-American. You pretty much were the number one player in all of high school. Did any of this stuff surprise you, or did you know you were that nice? Um, man, I mean... Of course, at the end, I can say, yeah, I, I knew I was that nice. But, I mean, but then a lot of things I had to deal with, too, was, you know, Dylan Baxter's not playing the the big caliber schools. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, would he do this in L.A.? Or would he do this? And my answer still is yes. Of course. You know yes. I agree saying? with that. Uh, 100%. Like, like, people always try and put San Diego down, you know, uh, uh, like, below L.A. And, and Florida and Texas. But I remember going, you know, the seven-on-sevens and – 
those things. Like I would team up with the LA guys, mm -hmm. and we would, and I was, you know, doing my thing versus, you know, the top people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's always going to be around. You know, people saying, trying to put things down that obviously it's in your eyes, and you know. Yeah, well, doing. San Diego's always had to deal with that. We're always the little yeah. brother to LA. I don't know if you follow high school football still, but San Diego beat a lot of the LA teams recently, and they're really? kind of, they're yeah, really we have better. two state champs. But I will say that, like growing up, because my cousin's a little Three. bit old. Yeah, my cousin's a little bit older than them though, and he went to Oregon State. But I remember like your class, with, like being the one that did kind of change the perception that people felt about San Diego sports, though, because it was one of the bigger recruiting classes, like, as a city in the whole country. Like, San Diego went from, like, maybe, you know, you get a couple guys, two or three, they're going to, like, real, like, D1 schools, and then, like, your classes, oh, no, everybody's Killer. outside with it. Killers. And they're on national television outside well, with it, like, you know. I mean, correct me if you think I'm wrong, or if you guys think I'm wrong, but the 2020, 20, excuse me, 2010 San Diego class of you, Brennan Clay, Tony, that was Kenny Clay. Seals. That was the other one. Was Ricky Seals that year too? Ricky Seals. Yeah, yeah. Ricky Seals. He went to Good Stanford. God. Um, yeah, Pete Thomas, the quarterback. There was a lot of great players that year, the most I can ever remember. But you were the top dog. I mean, they're, they're all great. Tony went to high school with us. We love him. Wait, Pete Thomas was actually older than me. Was he? I believe for Valhalla, right? Yeah, I thought he was the same guy, but you might be right. He's yeah. a year older. Okay, oh, got okay. It. But you were still the top dog. Um, did you like the attention or did you like the comparisons to Reggie? Because everybody was saying, you know, Dylan Baxter's the next Reggie Bush. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. Like, that's my favorite player. Of, all of ours, bro. Of all time. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, whatever happened in the NFL, he got a, he got a ring. He did. You know he did. Like, everybody can say what they want about him, but he got that ring at the end of the day. He's the best college running back to ever play the game. 100%. In my experience, like, um, it was kind of cool going to USC and getting Coach uh, Pola as my running back, Kennedy Pola, because uh, he was actually there. He was the recruiter, right? And uh, telling all, telling us all these stories and like, because I thought all I remember is the year Reggie did all that stuff, you know. And I'm thinking like he just did that all throughout college, but he didn't. Like he he really didn't. Like he got like his bits and pieces, right? And then mm -hmm. he blew up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like me in high school. Like, my bits and pieces and then blew up. So, like, that's Reggie Bush, dog. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, did you think it was crazy at the time, like, they're comparing me to Reggie? Like, um, I mean, that's crazy comparison, bro. Like, Reggie, everybody knows Reggie's, like, if you, high, if you were from the 619 and played high school football, like... Nobody he, compares anybody to Reggie. No, my, you don't. Point. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Don't. Um, you don't. Uh, I was at, I was honestly honored. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna just be like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I, I just like that's what it was. Like, no, like that was crazy to be honest. And like, yeah. it was a privilege to, you know, have that experience in my case. But you know, like, I'm not gonna say. Oh, well, I kind of I did deserve it. You know, what yeah, I mean? for I put, sure, I put of in course. My work, Yo, like, you were I, yeah, a baller. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'll just say it was it was an honor. Yep. I'll, I'll leave it at well that. Well said. Okay, so you go to USC, same school as Reggie Bush, and then the spring clip happens, bro. And <laughs> it's, it's so crazy. We're talking about a spring clip, but it was a huge deal. I mean, we're, I still we're remember kids it. in high school, and we're all showing each other in class. I still like, remember it. Look what Dylan Baxter did. Mm -hmm. That clip blew up. Were you surprised about the clip blowing up, or do you think it was because you're at USC I, now? Yeah, I was super surprised. I mean, act, I didn't... I didn't even honestly know, like, uh, it was going to be on ESPN and, and all this stuff. Like, I still haven't even, to this day, seen the ESPN clip of that play on there or whatever. And I didn't even, like, find out. So, well, behind the scenes, like, thing. So, my son's mom now, like, I was talking to her then. Like, we talked for 10 years, right? And so, she went to Boise State. Okay. And, uh... Like, I pulled some move. Like, it was, like, right after that practice, like, I went to the train station to the airport, then flew out to Boise to surprise her for her birthday, right? And then I remember, like, they set me up at the lunch, like, their little lunch place or whatever, and their whole football team came in, and I'm SC'd out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and they know <laughs> who you are. me mugging me, like, yeah. is it? like you know what I'm saying? And, and my little girl was, like, the girl, you know, like, that everyone's trying to talk to or whatever. And so, like, they asked, so finally she came in, and, like, they're asking her, like, who is he? And then, like, you know, they tell me, and they're like, oh, like, yeah, it was good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything is good. And, like, you're on ESPN for the play. So that's how I found out, oh, okay. like, that I was actually, so I was real surprised, to yeah. be honest. 
Do you have a question? No, that's just wild to be like to find out you're that guy in a cafeteria in a whole other state, but you're just sitting there kicking it. Yeah, that's wild. Like, hey, bro, you're on ESPN right now. But yeah, <laughs> people don't talk about when they tell tell your story. They don't talk about how you were recruited by Pete Carroll, but you played for Lane Kiffin. Am I Man. correct? <laughs> you want to talk a little how, bit? How about much that? was this? How, all right, before we get there? How did you take the news when you found out about Man, this? So let me give you some more behind the scenes. So when I so we found out. So let's even go before that. So all this stuff started coming out about Coach Carroll leaving, right? Mm-hmm. So me, my mom, my dad, we went to, you know, Coach Carroll's little beach house. And he, he sat down and told us, like, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I'm not leaving nowhere. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been committed to him since my freshman year in high school. So he was like my dad. Like, yeah. like we had a connection. Like, like, if he told me that, like, that's what it is. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, all right. So, like, that's when, because no one really tried to recruit me all through high school because they knew what, you know, they knew what time it was. Like, I was going to, yeah. you know, with Coach Carroll. And then, so when all that stuff started happening, that's when I kept getting hit from all these colleges. So then the Army All-American game came, right? So, uh, and then I didn't think I was going to win the little player of the year thing, right? So then I remember that night of that award, the little director came up to me and he was like, yo, like you won. So get a speech ready. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like, yeah. Yeah, dango. Yeah, yeah. For real. <laughs> you know? So like, that was like, really like when I was like, all right, like they're finally recognizing and all that. So I was behind stage getting ready and I'm getting a call from coach Carroll. Right. And then I was like, all right, he must've found out that, you know, I, I got the award. He's calling to congratulate me. So I answer and he's like, Dylan, like, you know, I'm proud of you. You know, I know you mm. won. And I'm like, cool. And he was like, but I got to tell you something right now, you know, that I just want you to know first. And he was like, I got to leave. I got to leave USC. And I was like, no way. And then he was like, you know, like, just go to USC and I'll take care of you. And I didn't know what that mean. But then he became, you know, Seattle Seahawks head coach, whatever. Yeah. So then I had to go out there and give that speech or whatever. So that's how I found out. Got it. Wow. That's wild. That is crazy. And those are two totally different personalities, bro. Yeah. And like, and of course me, if I could really like go back, right. Mm -hmm. Like I just fell in love with coach Carroll. Like he's a player's coach. He, He really is. And he, he's an amazing dude. Like he's an amazing coach. He cares about, you know, the players. And so, like, I was just so in love with him uh, and whatever. Like, right when he told me that, he was like, you know, I still want you to go to USC. Like, and it automatically in my head, I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Instead, like, if I could really go back, like, I should have been like, all right. Because at the end of the day, it's a business move. It you is. You know what I'm saying? For the rest of your life. And I'm not really thinking about that, you know. And, like, I, I wish I would have, like, you know decommitted because Lane Kiffin was sending me all this stuff from Tennessee. And you know what I'm saying? He was all, all the and, yeah. and then my dad is a Florida Gator. You know what I'm saying? So he he hate, he hated Lane Kiffin. Did your dad play at Florida? Uh my dad played yes. My dad played uh yeah he played football at Florida and then he played baseball okay. uh, for the twins. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Way back. But anyway so Maybe taking a step back. And, and I didn't really know about Lane Kiffin like that. I, I, I really didn't know. But I, what I did know is that he would never speak to me directly. He would always send people like, and I was like used to, if you want to, not used to, but how I felt was like, if you really want me, then you're going to come and talk to me, you know, yourself. Exactly. And that's not Lane Kiffin. He doesn't work like that, you know, which is kind of like disrespectful to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So one of the few things we have in common is we both played for Lane Kiffin. I actually didn't. You played. I was on the team at Alabama when he was the quarterback's coach. I was a quarterback. So one day we're walking up. I'll give you some behind the scenes of my life. We're walking up to the quarterback room, and I go, hey, do you know Dylan Baxter? You, you know, he was supposed to be the next Reggie Bush. And he, he stopped what he's doing. And I was a walk-on. You know how they treat walk-ons. He goes, Dylan Baxter is the best high school football player I've ever seen. That's what Lane Kiffin said to me. And I was like, that's crazy because he's seen everybody, you know? And yeah. I will say this, I, you know, Lane Kiffin is Lane Kiffin. You know what I'm saying? Like he wanted, he wanted the best for me. He really did. Like in the beginning, like I was his dude. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was, I was his move. 
or whatever. And I, you know, me being a knucklehead, being a freshman, Oof. that same girl that I had the baby with is the same girl I snuck out during like uh, Hell Week or not Hell Week. Uh, like the training camp. Almost, training like camp. Yeah. Summer camp. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Right mm-hmm. before the season. Yeah. I got suspended for that first game. Okay. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Right. And this is what happened. So my girl came all the way down on my behalf, like I told her to. <laughs> and I knew I couldn't leave, you know, and I, I knew yeah. I couldn't leave. But dude started telling me like there's ways to get out. And I'm like, you know how it is towards the end. Like you, you want a girl. You yeah, know of course. Saying? Yeah. So like anyways, like so she came all the way from San Diego and then I went downstairs and then. Like, there's a security there, and then I told him, I was like, yo, like, I got to at least go give my girl the keys to my apartment so she has somewhere to sleep. And he was like, Dylan, if you walk out that door, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he pretty much lets you know. I got to call coach. And I was like, all right, go ahead and make the call because I, I got to give it to her, you know? So, like, that's how I got suspended. So that was the first thing that happened, right? And Coach Kiffin still was on my side. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He was still on my side. And then, like, now the second game, what was it? Virginia Tech? I think it was when I came back. Virginia, bro. Virgi- I was at the game. It was Your first game was against Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, I was it there. was, yeah. yeah. And so, like, <laughs> now, like, all right, here's the game. Like, here I am. And then Coach Kiffin's calling me back to the, are you ready? You know what I'm saying? Like, here it is. And then I only, what, played two plays that game. Yeah. You know, but, like. I'll say my first year in college, like, it was just a series of me, like, just being young and not, you know, not stepping up to what I was supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, not, like, just not giving it 100 in all aspects. Mm -hmm. Like, you know? Yeah, I saw a couple stories, you tell me if they're true or not, about, like, a golf cart ride with, like, some friend of yours that was, like, an agent, and then he took you to Fiji. But I don't know if that stuff's true. It's just stuff you read, you know? So, he was a friend of mine, Teague Egan. Okay. Like, right. And and we were friends, you know what I'm saying? And and he wasn't an agent. I mean, he he is. But like, so here's what happened. Like, we were just friends and he's a, a rich, you know, rich little kid going to USC, going to USC. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't walk. To <laughs> class. Seen it a hundred times. Golf cart to class. Of course. You know Wild. <laughs> yeah. Me, I was running late. So I'm like, yo, can you give me a ride? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, of course, him going through campus, bumping it, like, bumping the cart. I'm like, yo, like, what are you doing? And then, uh, and that was it. I got to class, that was it. And then I started getting hit up, like, right? Wait, and it wasn't his fault neither. Like, he took the agent test that morning. Okay. Like, to become an agent. So he didn't even realize, like, he was an agent giving me a ride. You know oh, what I'm saying? Didn't click so, in his like, head, yeah. Yeah, didn't click in his head. And, like, I obviously didn't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... That's how that happened. Okay. You is know? the Fiji thing true or is that all bull crap? Man, I'll, I'll leave that for the unknown. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got, I'm going to keep asking about stories I've seen because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're here. The compliance thing where you said that you were getting like recruited illegally by like Alabama, Florida, Fresno State, a couple schools. Is that actually true? Um, or can you explain what kind of ha- like what they said happened at least? All right. What happened? So, I mean, they said, oh, I don't even from what I saw, I'll tell you what I read. You yeah, tell, yeah, you, you yeah. Tell, tell me, okay. Me, yeah, tell me I saw happened. that USC was on probation because of, um, you know, USC had that probation when you were there, correct? Yeah. And yeah. you said that the you, compl- you told the compliance office you were getting recruited illegally by these other schools and that they need to check on that. And then they said it never happened before you went to San Diego State. That's right. I don't want to. Yeah, don't, you know, don't say anything you don't want right, to say. Yeah, I don't want to say anything of course. Wrong. You don't have okay. to. You know what I'm saying? Of course. All right, yeah, no problem at all. Okay, so you go to San Diego State h- halfway through your, your sophomore year, correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened there? Did you ask for your release, or how did you end up at San Diego State? Yeah, man, so did I ask for my release from From USC, USC yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so the second year started, mm-hmm. you know, and I was I was killing it. That's Yeah, that's what happened. So I was killing it. Like, I, I gave it my all. I was, I was lifting, whatever. Doing good at practice, and then I was the starter all the way up until, like, I thought until the first game, right? And then they called us in, and then they they let uh, DJ DJ Morgan, that was the guy, yeah. Hmm. They let DJ Morgan start, and like, like me, I was upset because like it was obviously clear, right? Like that I was the one that should have been starting. But even if it wasn't me, I would have accepted Curtis McNeil Moody, hmm. like him starting. Like, I would have been okay with that. Yeah. But then he said, DJ, 
you know, and like it, I don't know, but everything after that started getting bad. Like he, Coach Kiffin started, you know, doing disrespectful stuff. Like, like you know how you sit in the plane. It's always the alumni, and then like, uh, like the water guys and whatever, and then the team in the back. Yep. Like right, and mm-hmm. then I remember picking up my card to see where I sit, and I was like, what? And then it was up front, like with the with the water guys. Right. And so it was like stuff like that, like that you don't you don't do, you know. And so like that's when like I stopped. Uh, obviously, like uh, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, so I asked for my release. OK. I asked for my release and then ended up going to San Diego State. Why, why San Diego State? Just because you're back in San Diego where you're from? Man, um, who was it? between? It was between them or Oklahoma State. I thought you were going to say Oklahoma with, with Tony and Kenny. Nah, like, I, I tried. I was going to go there, but, like, the, it was, the, I guess there was too much going on with me or whatever, and they didn't want that, like... Publicity? That bad publicity. Yeah, they didn't want three San Diego running backs on the team because that remember that Damian Williams, too, from your mm-hmm. Mesa on that team. But um, San Diego State, so how did you end up, I ended up there? Man, so I ended up going to San Diego State, and uh, it was actually real quick. Um and that was another mistake that I made. Like, I should have stayed there, you know, but I started getting all caught up in my head. Like, I got to sit out for a year, mm-hmm. you know, and I didn't want to sit out. Mm-hmm. So I made the mistake by going to a lower – I couldn't even go D2. I had to go to NAI and go to Baker. So okay. So why, why did you leave state? Um, because I didn't want to sit out a year. Oh, that's yeah. the whole okay. reason you left. So the whole okay, see, I, I want you to clear the air on some things because yeah. we heard that you were, were stealing things from the locker room. It, yeah, exactly. That's a lot that, of stories yeah. have you painted as the Cam Newton of SDSU. Yeah, you're, you're painted you know as that. Yeah, a guy that you're really not is what I believe. Yeah, so. I mean, I still find out stuff to this day, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, no. People that's, just want to say stuff it. to say yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's not, you know. I'm okay. I got it. Not a bad dude. So, you end up NAIA in Baker, and that's in Iowa, correct? No, that is in uh, South of Kansas. Kansas, right? Kansas yeah, that's South what it is. Can, yeah. Okay, how now was that? That was a culture shock. Yeah, can you? Can you? I could have, I could have said it. Hi, bad. Can Man. you explain a little bit about that whole thing? Um, shout out Coach Grossner, though. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, There's yeah, always yeah. good ones out there. Yeah, There's yeah, always he, good yeah, ones. You can find real ones everywhere. Yeah, he was he was the head coach, like, and he he was my dude, man. But like, besides that, like, I was a city boy over in you know, in the middle. Middle of nowhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> With Dorothy and right, stuff, you know? Uh, like, really clicking, there's no place like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, I, like, it, it for sure humbled me. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, for sure. Like, and, and I've always been the type of guy, like, like, obviously, when you ask me, them comparing me to Reggie, like, I'm humble. You know, I am humble. Like, I take pride in that. But, like, uh. Like, I had to, you know, like, they was all expecting, like, some guy to come with an attitude and, and this and that. So, there was already perceptions, mm. you know, of how I was going to be. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like, I'm, I'm super, I'm super laid back. I'm cool. Fun to be with. Like, I'm yeah. charismatic. So, this, <laughs> this is the thing that confused me because I just met you today for the first time. People say things about you that just aren't true because I knew Tony a little bit. And he said, you know, Dylan's the most chill guy, cool guy. But yeah. Other people will lie on your name because you were at the top. People always want to knock off the people at the top. Did you yeah. find that when you got to Baker, you were just kind of one of the guys? Oh, for sure, man. I mean, you know, I had to, just like anywhere else, you got to earn your, you know. And I, and I, you know, sat back, like, and told myself, you know, like, just because, you know, who I was and what I've done, which is actually nothing in college so far. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I got to, you know work hard, do all the things that, you know, you're supposed to do when you get to a team. Yeah. You know, and I did that, and, you know, they welcomed me with open arms. Like, it was cool. What's the plan to stay at Baker? Because you were there two years, correct? Yeah. What's your plan to – because I know you're saying you got kind of in your head at SDSU. You were like, I got to sit out of here. Was the plan to be at Baker the full two years, or were you initially thinking when you got there – I think you're right, there's one stoplight there in the whole town. <laughs> What's the plan to get there – go off and then ship out or were you just like I'm gonna kind of ride this out man I'll be honest with you like at the time when I when I went to Baker like I, there was so much going on like I didn't really even have I just wanted to be okay like I mentally, respect that yeah like, mentally for a little bit you know and if that took going out in the middle of nowhere and being cool with guys that you know treated me like I was you know just one of them I'll do that you know what I'm saying? Like, I had no intentions on going there for a year and leaving 
or I was just riding it out. You know what I'm saying? And ended up staying there two years, bro. That's all I respect because I feel like in today's society, we have these guys that are in the transfer portal and they're just shipping, you know, they're just moving around like yeah. that. And I feel like sometimes you just got to, like, you got not necessarily humble yourself, but you got to prioritize certain things before you even get the sports thing handled. And I feel like that's what Baker kind of did for you. You kind of just got your head straight. And Stability. You, yeah, exactly. Because I feel like some guys, you know, sports is an escape. But once that becomes the panic in your life, or, like, if that's what's causing all this, like, commotion that's going around you, like, where do you go from there? If that's, like, where you, your peace has been the whole time. You know yeah. what I mean? And you went off. Sorry, you went off, dude. You had over 1,000 yards, 13 TDs, I think, your last year there. Um, was it easy for you there? Or was it, was it kind of a grind just playing football game? I mean, it – it was a lot easier, of course, than, you yeah. know, D1 and all that. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't high school, mm -hmm. like, all over again. But, like, uh, I'll just, yeah, it was easier than D1. Did it prepare you for the NFL? That's kind of what no. I want to get. Okay. <laughs> That's, what That's what I thought. So, no. do you think, looking back at it, would you have went back to Baker or would you try to go to another D1 school? Um, or state? You said you would either stay yeah. at San Diego State. Okay. You know, Got it. You know, I would have, you know. Bite the belt and stayed, bite the bullet and mm -hmm. stayed there, you know what I'm saying? And, and did my, you know, year of time or whatever, however you want to look at it, yeah. you know, and better, I should have looked at it as an opportunity to better myself and to, you know, get ahead of the game. But, you know, I was still all mixed up in my head from what was going on at US, from USC, because you got to realize that, you know, the little kid, that was, that was my dream. Mm -hmm. That was my dream, and it was all taken away. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it started happening, like, real fast from the time Coach Carroll left to now I got Lane Kiffin, but, like, it was okay. But then it, ju it just, like a haystack, it just started, you know. Piling up. Yeah, piling up, bro. Just having a different perspective at the time, probably. That's what that's what it sounds like. And honestly, if I could do it, I, I, I should have stayed at USC. You know what I'm saying? I should have I should have stayed at USC – and because I was just so like irritated, I'm like, why is he not, you know, playing me? Why, like, I'm, and all the inter, uh, you know, interviewers are coming to me like, why aren't you playing? You know, and and I couldn't, I couldn't even say the truth. They wouldn't let me, Coach Kiffin. I, I he never give you a reason why you weren't playing. No, I'm saying Coach Kiffin would be like, if you, if they ask you that, you tell them to talk to Lane Kiffin. What was his reason? Sounds like a coach answer then, right there. And then when they would ask Lane Kiffin, he, we're not going to talk about Dylan Baxter. Do you think that with all those antics, like the plane thing and, like, uh, guys jumping on a depth chart, was his goal to kind of put you through some adversity, or do you think he wanted you to transfer out? I mean, by the end, by the end, I mean, you've probably got a little. And I remember when Lane Kiffin went to Alabama. Uh, Coach Saban was not playing that, though, when he did his little move or whatever he did, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, He's like, like, yeah. He wasn't playing that, and, no. and but Lane Kiffin was the head coach at USC, so like he it's, he could do all that, do whatever he wants, yeah. whatever he wants. You know what I'm saying? And, and disrespecting you know players in front of play, like he don't do that. Well, it didn't work out at USC. It didn't. Yeah. You know nah, he saying? got like, real quick. He got mm -hmm. he got let go bad. Real quick. Yeah, real bad. Yeah. Real bad. No, yeah. You know that you know on the sidewalk says Fire Lane. They put Kiffin at the end of Fire Lane Kiffin all over the school. <laughs> I swear that's a real thing that happened. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy, huh? Remember that is. That Tennessee you're supposed to name his baby. Knox. After, yeah. yeah. He has, he has yeah. a son named Knox still. Yeah. All them boys yeah. gonna kill him. <laughs> yeah. Was, was Kiffin there when Arian Foster was there at Tennessee? He would know that. I don't think so though. No. No, he wasn't. I only asked because he went to Mission Bay for one year too. Yeah. And in my head, when you were saying that he wouldn't show up to the cafeteria to talk to you, I was like, he is missing a complete like recruiting opportunity right here. If you have a guy in your program yeah. who's also at that school, but okay, if he wasn't there, that makes more sense then. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't there, yeah. So after Baker, uh, you signed on with the Seahawks practice squad back with Pete Carroll. Yeah. How was that situation? Was all right? Man, um, I mean, I'll be honest, it was a lot different, you know what I'm saying, than than the relationship that we had back in high school. But, I mean, real quick, it made me understand, like, like college and NFL is way different. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, college, they're, you know, selling you a dream, selling you all this, which is true, like, most likely, you know, how you're going to be in all this. In the NFL, I mean, you're, you, I mean, there's another guy, you know, right there for you. And, and more importantly, like, they got a job they're trying to keep at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. They got to feed their families. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, there, it wasn't like, it wasn't the same, so to say. You know what I'm saying? And I think, honestly, like Coach Carroll was just giving me that shot that, you know, he, he promised. He kind of felt like he owed you a little bit, yeah. maybe. Was Marshawn Lynch the running back at the time on the Seahawks? 
Uh, yeah. Okay, that, that was gonna be tough to begin with. Then I would have, I would have chilled right behind him. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you guys would be boys. Like you guys yeah, are kind of similar. Yeah, saying, you like, guys would I be mean, a good duo. Man, <laughs> do, hey, Marshawn, I, res- I respect it, bro. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I've always been the guy. Like the best man plays. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. I'm not. And at that time, or when I wasn't gonna say like I'm better than Marshawn. Like no, no, I wasn't. You know what I'm saying. Like I could, I would have loved to learn a lot from him. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, they, I don't even think they were going to use me like that. Like, they wanted me to play more of a slot. Okay. Is that like a Percy Harvin type yeah. of deal? And that's what Coach <laughs> Carroll originally told me, how he wanted to use me. Not how Lane did. Like, because I'm not a You were going to be a slot back. at USC? I was going to be slot. I feel like people in San Diego would have been really upset if they put you a slot. I would have been devastated, yeah, I'll be I mean, honest. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Coach Carroll, that's what he's good at. Like, putting the chessboard together though mm-hmm. you know he right. always called me his his chain mover his first down and i'll be that you're you know just a natural saying? athlete because like, i'm a good like person at playing my part mm-hmm. like that's what it takes to win a championship you know what i'm saying like everyone needs to focus on their thing let the quarterback do all that other you know all other stuff, stuff yeah it is what it is so you worked out with the chargers after that and i think that was the last thing you did with the nfl correct yeah that was about it man or were you just didn't want to play anymore after that, or what was that? Man, so after that, I think I was trying to do the CFL thing okay. for a little mm-hmm. while, but and I got with uh, Edmonton. Mm-hmm. I got with them, and I went up to their, um, basically like their, their the training camp or whatever it was, and then after that, like I didn't they, they I didn't end up uh, they didn't end up letting me obviously come like progress after that. So then after that, I mean, it was kind of, and I'll be honest, man, I was going through a lot as far as like, like I was, I was doing, uh, pills. I oh, was, you were? Yeah. I started, I started messing around with, uh, pills and, and, and that started way at Baker, honestly, like I got injured or whatever. And then doctor gave me pain kill, uh, painkillers and like. And I feel comfortable talking about this because, like, it's big nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't want to. Not too many people are talking about it. I don't want to cut you off, bro, but, like, I'm really happy you're talking about this because people don't know this side of you or things that people go through. Yeah. People look Dylan Baxter, he has everything, but that's further from the truth, you know? Oh, yeah, man. So, so when you're going through that time of your life with the, the pills and stuff, was it hard to focus on football? Man, bro, like, honestly, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. To be honest, like, I mean, they consume my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it got out of hand real quick. Mm-hmm. And my whole motto was be the best. So I, I started being the best at that. Like, you know, whatever. <laughs> like it, it's crazy to say, but, like, you know, just doing obnoxious stuff to get pills. And then, you know, later on, like, years go on, you know, like, I'll be honest, it later turned into fentanyl. You took fentanyl? Yeah. Like, you, you knew what you were taking? Yeah. Yeah, my you brother my crazy. brother passed away from that. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, bro. You so, know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I have so many questions. But with the fentanyl, how do you, how do you take it if it's so lethal? Like, Man, it, bro, like, I I can't even, I don't, I don't under, like, so, I mean, I was doing so many pills, right? I was doing so many pills, and so that transfer from the pills to fentanyl was so, I guess, easy for me. Mm-hmm. And it made me honestly downplay it, you know, like, and I was, you know, smoking two, three grams a day of it, like crazy. And I, and, and I thought it was nothing. How are you alive? You know, and I've, I've never OD'd or anything like that. You know, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Like, thank God. It was only a matter of time before it was coming. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, and so like, I got myself into treatment to be honest. Good for you. Like, yeah. I just graduated. Not too long ago. Congratulations. Good for you. Like, bro, like that, it was hard. Yeah. Like hard, you know, and I would, it was hard for me to look in the mirror, you know what I'm saying? Like, and go out here and put on this face for everybody, like everything's okay, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, nothing in life life is easy, really, you know what I'm saying? And and I will say that was the biggest linebacker to this day. (laughs) Shake. Yeah. Like, for sure. Like, it was was all bad. Congratulations, though, man. What was, like, the moment, if you don't mind me asking, like, you were like, okay, I got to get help? Or did someone come to you and like, hey, we got to sort this out? Man, um, I mean, I, I realized I need help when I started being okay with just being okay. You know, like I wasn't going nowhere in life. I wasn't, 
I mean, I wasn't no, like, anybody homeless out there or anything like that. But, like, for me to just be like this, like, I'm not okay with that. You know what I'm saying? And, like, like I got real numb, like, to my emotions and, and, and realizing it, you know what I'm saying, for a long time. Like, and uh, I remember my son, you know, my son, my son's only, he just turned 11. But, like, uh, coming up, like, he didn't know really too much. and But he did get to the age where he noticed, like, he didn't know what I was doing or anything, mm-hmm. but, like, he knew that I was not doing something okay. And he he, he was like, Dad, like, when are you going to stop, like, playing around is what he would say, you know? And then I was like, all right, yeah, I need to go ahead and handle this, you know? So um, what do you do now? What are you up to now? <laughs> Man, um, so I just got offered uh, – with this little company to go around the world and share my story, man, you know, uh, with uh, the whole fentanyl thing and who I was and like drugs do not discriminate. hundred <laughs> percent. I, I swear they do. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, if I could, cause like, it's crazy. Like kids are doing it in high school right mm-hmm. now, which is insane. Like I didn't even know what pills were in high school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's like, it's a pandemic right now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's killing people. And so, like, if I could, you know, go around the world and save a kid or two's life, bro, I'm, I'm with it. Dude, that's so good that you're yeah, doing 100%. this. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, it can't be easy, right, to talk about these types of things. Nah, man. I mean, but it's 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 reality. It's life. You know what I'm saying? And, like, people do need to know. Yeah. They need to hear that. And, and I'm willing to, you know, use my story. and Because, you know, I think I'm still young enough to where the kids will listen. You know what I'm saying? I've done the things that they want to do. So, like, and, and I can show them how bad it got, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, and I can show them hope that you can come out at the end of it. So, yeah. I think, you know, it's something they need to hear. Showing some burn, uh, vulnerability to, yeah, for sure. to um, open up and help out others, yeah. one could say. Yeah, definitely. If you can, uh, so we went through a list of things that have been said about you. I know you said you didn't hear a lot of it, but I've always wondered. It, what's one thing you've heard about yourself or, like, a story, and you're like, I can't believe like people are buying this mm. or like maybe um, a publication that you're like, they're just driving me into the ground and none of this is true. Man, let me see. I haven't heard nothing in so long. I was, I'm telling Probably you, a good thing. Uh, you know, what's crazy. Like I, I'll give you a second thing. I was with Travis at a Carl's jr. When they printed the story that you had stole stuff from SDSU. I remember exactly where I was. Cause I was like, there's no way. Yeah. That's like, crazy. I was like, I'm like, he just got there. I'm like, because in my head, I'm like, Marshall Falk went there. He Yeah, he had to leave USC. Like, we got this. Yeah. One. Like, San Diego State, I'm like, this is the greatest come up yeah, of all honestly. time. Yeah. And then someone posted that story, and I'm like, this is how old it was. It was like, you didn't even have data on your phone. Like, you had, like, right, like I had to click the link on Twitter, and it would open my data. And I remember, this is so funny. This is why I remember it. I remember, like, being in the Carl's Jr., it loading, and getting a call from my mom. Like, you're already over your data. What are you trying to find right now? Because I kept clicking reload, and it would not reload. Yeah. And I was just like, but yeah, like I feel like with someone like in your position, there's just so much out there, man, and not all of it can be true, obviously. Like I can't, I can't remember an exact you know story or whatever, but there was a lot. There was a lot, and and at, at some point, I, I wasn't surprised anymore. Like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Like this, why not say this and and people believe it? But like, you know how the media works. Like, bad publicity is good publicity. Like, you know, like, that's how it works. So, like, it is what it is. That's, that's sad, because I feel like you got to get numb to that, too. Like, you got to get numb to knowing that, like, you're just a casualty of society at that point. Like, whatever people want to read and see about you or say about you, it's going to be like, yeah, it just got to happen. You know what I mean? Is it is it tough seeing watching, like, NFL games? You say you're not big in the NFL, but is it tough watching guys that you know play in the league, or are you just like, it is what it is? Um, In the beginning... It, it was hard. I ain't going to lie. Like, of it, course. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're like, ranked higher than all these guys. And yeah. not, when I'm saying, like, it was hard, not like, like, oh, like, like, F Tony or Kenny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm happy for them. Of course. Mm-hmm. Like, I am happy. Like, and I wish the best. Like, I've never been a hater or anything like that. Yeah. But, like, I'm supposed to be there, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing it with them and, and calling, like, you know, like, before we see on ESPN, like, hey, what'd you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like it, it was it was just crazy how everything laid out. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, all I had to do was just walk. Like, and everything would have been okay. What do you mean? Like, as far as, like, everything was paved. The path. The path was paved. You know? Like, all I had to do was just do the right thing or walk or whatever. But, like... That's that's a fairy tale, right? Yeah, that's the there is never that easy. Each never decision, easy. each decision, you know, can take you off the path, and at that point, it creates a new, a new path. Of course, but maybe this is your path, you know, to help people. Oh yeah, you know, and and for a long time, like, like I'm just now finding out what that path is. Like, so for a long time, I was lost. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'll t- I'll tell you this: there's still to this day, like, there's no linebacker that can line up in front of me, like, and and stop me from getting past them or from not shaking them like still right now i'm about to ask what's your 40 right like, now i was gonna say i've never been fast <laughs> said, uh, not according I, to ncaa yeah. I, I can make people miss that's my thing you're elusive. okay like i can i can make it so you will not you can't stay in front of me like i don't know how or whatever if you were anybody else i'd call bullshit on this by the way but since, <laughs> yeah but you're yeah my man told us earlier he wished he had been the quarterback at oregon and i was thinking like you know what i would have done the ncaa with dylan baxter as a quarterback at yeah oregon. my <laughs> man my visit to oregon oh, okay can we talk about this yeah what? yeah what were your visits like because yeah, i have some stories bro. I, yeah i went d3 i love hearing these <laughs> things man so like oh uh, that's hilarious so obviously i didn't go on all my visits like all yeah, through five. high school right yeah mm-hmm. so then like that stuff happened and then, and I graduated a half year early of mm-hmm. high school. So, like, I had to make a decision in, like, two weeks. Like, right after the football season. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I just went on, how many visits did I go on? Four? I went on four visits, like, within a span of two weeks. Oh, wow. Right? Damn. They had you flying out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was in, in, like, and then my mindset, because I already had Coach Carroll in here, like, I'm going to USC. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going on these visits to for fun, for fun. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Which was stupid. Like I should have actually listened, and you know, that's funny. They had the offer was crazy. Like it was so Oregon, Mm -hmm. so Oregon, and this was like uh, before all their new jerseys came out. This Mm -hmm. was the year before that, and like so they flew me there, right? And uh, and that was when Masoli was there. Jeremiah Masoli. Jeremiah Masoli, yeah. right? And he's the reason I did not, because I was actually thinking about Oregon, yeah. right? But he's the reason I did not go. Like, he left me in the club, like, all bad. Oh, wow. Like, it was all, like, he did, it was bad, right? So, anyway, so, like, they, they brought me to the new locker room that was just getting built, and my locker was the only one done. Like, they had Baxter with all the new jerseys, Baxter, like, everything. Number one, I was going to be number one. Because Chip wanted me to play quarterback. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he told, this is why Masoli did that. He told me, he sat down me and Masoli, and he was like, if Dylan comes here, he's the starting quarterback. And I was like. Right then and there. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> I'm about to say, I'm like, what's going on right now? I was like, I didn't say, I didn't say that. <laughs> like, the NCAA is really a business. Like, oh, this, that is wild. I mean, why did they let Masoli you take you out? Yeah, that's wild. He was my mentor. Why? Well, they messed that one up. Yeah, they no, already, no, 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 no. You had a relationship with him before? No. Then what? Yeah, yeah, that makes no sense. I mean, because he was quarterback. But he just was told you were going to take his spot. So why? No, so that was at the end. Oh, oh okay. okay. Oh, oh, so he's wow. just asking. Oh, okay. okay. yeah. wow. He already knew who I was. Of course, yeah. Yeah, he knew who I was and everything I did or whatever. But, like, even if, though, I was like, like, dang, bro. Like, That's like messed that? up. Like, yeah. salty. Like, you know, I'm just a young kid out there. You know, like, we go out. And all that, and I don't know where we are. Yeah. You know, and he just leaves me in there. I mean, I do my thing, you know what I'm saying? But, like, <laughs> just left me in of course. there. And then I was like, dang, he really just, like. Yeah, you're in Eugene, Oregon. Like, what am I, yeah. You know? So, what, what else uh, did you go for your visits? So, so there, and then Oregon. me, Tony. <laughs> Tony. Kenny, possibly. I do like no, Tony did. Tony me committed Tony, like four times. I wanted Saturday. him to go to Michigan so bad. Me, Tony, and Kenny went to Michigan. Yeah. For I, our visit. Yeah. So Michigan, Michigan, when, when Tate Forcier was there. Yes, uh, like, I want to hit. With, hey, Tate was running Michigan like bad. Like I was like, okay, Tate, <laughs> <laughs> little Tate. Like, it, it, like it was a fun visit. I ain't gonna like that was a fun visit, and like, and that's when they played Ohio State with uh, probably caught the L. Uh, Ohio State won. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We probably mm-hmm. caught the L. 
What was the quarterback's name? T- Troy oh. Smith? No. No. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not Braxton. I, Pryor. I, oh, God. Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor. I had a whole. The, the GOAT. I had to go watch this, though. <laughs> watch this. So, after the game, like, right, like, uh, they come walking up in the in the hall where all the recruits are. And they and then Terrell was like, "Y'all don't want to go to Michigan," and I was like, "I'm I'm SC," and they just lost to SC. Remember that big game they lost yeah, earlier yeah. that year, and then like, so yeah, that was that. Was that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that because he was like, he like he he did his thing that game, you know? Yeah. Oh like, man, you know, like he was just talking talking hella mess, bro. Yeah, and I was like, bro, I'm SC, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, so we're. Uh, do you have any stories about any things that were offered to you that were just like crazy? Yeah, bro. Um, Especially in that time because it was different, you know? Oregon and Michigan, bro. Yeah. Like, those two schools right there, I mean, besides, like, all, like, what they promised, like, as far as football, like, they offered – Yeah. Some, mm. some stuff, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I like like the way Michigan gets down. Oh, oh, (laughs) dang. Yeah, no. You got to try. You know, I like to think of it – it's just a little extra effort, you know what I mean? Like – yeah. Hey, you but, like, which is normal. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. What's the SEC well, rule? Now. Like you can't uh, if you're in the SEC. Like I can't offer you more cash than your home state school. Yeah. Like if I'm from Tennessee, Alabama can't offer me more cash than Tennessee offered me. Really? Out of respect, yeah. It's like it's the only thing. It's, that's their only rule that they have in their recruiting pool. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, yeah, supposedly. I don't believe it. I've known a lot of people who went to Tennessee. Th- those checkbooks don't end. They're they're endless. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to add about your story that you didn't get to mention? Man, uh, no, nah, man, y'all pretty much covered it all. Man. I tried, bro. Yeah, you watched a lot of videos, yeah. read a lot of articles. <laughs> thing, y'all do your thing. I'm this is real. I'm I'm real honored to be here, bro. Like I do, I I, feel like I represent anything. I support Dago, so and we know, support you. Oh, I'm gonna let you know. Josh told us we're gonna do two in a week, and he said we have a guest, and we're usually pretty good on our group message about like letting people know who's coming beforehand. And I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, why is he like? He should have told us, like, we're having a guest. Like, it's kind of random. And then he said to him back, I said, oh, bro, don't even worry about this. I'm going to hit YouTube right now. I'm, I got to do all this research. I was like, Jeez. you could have told me two hours before. Your rivals and Yeah, I was, bro, bro, I had to make a max prep account for this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're really honored to have you here. Honestly. And, for uh, real, honestly. Yeah. We Living appreciate legend. you, bro. Like, you're a legend. Um, you're only 31 years old, so you have a long life ahead of you to help other people. And I appreciate what you're doing because my brother experienced, you know, fentanyl. And um, it's a real thing, and I appreciate you helping other people out. Yeah, no problem. And thank you for sharing your story. Of course, I appreciate you guys. And as always, we out.